joining once again precious family uh, in lockdown uh, in your homes this morning I just want to say uh, we appreciate the privilege of coming into your homes in this way and um, continue to pray a blessing over you during this interesting time there is no clarity as to when we will be able to meet as a congregation together again uh, yet but in the meantime we are committed to meeting with you online in this way and don't forget we also are making use of our whatsapp groups um, which is another way of connecting and staying in touch and um, may the lord keep his hand on you and keep encouraging you so uh, even as we meet like this this morning last week um, i shared that word that this uh, is an incredible op opportunity and that you and I are powerful uh, to make the most of this opportunity. This does not have to be a downtime for you. This can be a step up and a step forward. So I speak that again over you. I speak life over you. We touched on additional spiritual capacities last week and we looked at some of the things that Paul did, uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, while he was in prison. Uh, a similar kind of lockdown experience. He couldn't go anywhere uh, for a good portion of time. And he focused uh, his attention on encouraging others, on prayer, on being thankful. Um, and he was giving a lot of attention to his ministry, even though he was restricted. So today I feel the Lord encouraging me to focus on more of our relationships, our relationships during lockdown. Uh, if you're like me, you are in close quarters with your family and uh, by now you've done four and a half weeks uh, of lockdown in these unusually prolonged close proximity moments with family um, and there is an unusual separation uh, from you and your normal uh, distracting activities so there's extra pressure on our family relationships and I believe there's grace for you today uh, from heaven, from the throne, to deal with the challenges and deal with the stresses. Can I remind you this morning that family is a great place to nurture social skills like basic consideration of others. Doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. And uh, things like sharing. You've got to share space. You might have to share the bathroom, the hot water, the food that's available. Cleaning up behind you, serving, doing at least your share of what keeps the home going. Um, another thing you can learn is the fun and the reward of teamwork as you tackle tasks together as a family. The other day we got the family out into, into the garden to rake up the leaves and clean up and uh, things go so much quicker and there's so much more fun when you do them together what about manners just saying thank you showing appreciation for others uh, and what they've done for you what about forgiveness of faults and weaknesses and mistakes you may need to have or receive forgiveness back a little bit later <laughs> so it's a good thing to practice what about peaceful conflict resolution that's a skill to learn and to practice. Close proximity with family puts extra strain and extra pressure on these skills and will show up our weaknesses during a period like this. Um, we want to avoid getting offended and carrying offense. Offense is emotional and can be difficult to deal with. So uh, we all need to be reminded today that having family around us is actually an incredible blessing and privilege and should not be taken for granted. I went and uh, dug up some quotes by some well-known um, voices and I thought just to encourage you with them, perhaps you know the actor Michael J. Fox. He made this statement, uh, family, he says, is not an important thing, it's everything family is not an important thing it's everything george bernard shaw the playwright said a happy family is but an earlier heaven a happy family is but an earlier heaven 
So uh, I just want to point out you're holding something very precious if you've got family around you. Uh, another beautiful quote says, family is one of nature's masterpieces. I'd like to ad adapt that and say one of the creator's masterpieces. Um, Proverbs 17 verse 6 says, Older people are distinguished by their grandchildren. And children take pride in their parents. Let me just remind you that there is an effect that family has on our sense of well-being and our sense of self-worth. And it's a great, um, what's the word, compliment to you if you are able to participate in, in nurturing healthy family around you. So relationships are important, but above all, family relationships. It's an incredible blessing and privilege to have a family and not to be taken for granted. So can I ask you, how are, are the relationships going in your family? <laughs> um, is there any disconnection? Is there any distance or tension in the relationships? Is there something you can do about it to win some ground during this lockdown? So we're going to continue digging into the letter of the Colossians this morning because there's some great encouragement still there uh, from Paul on his lockdown in this Roman prison. I want to jump to Colossians chapter 3 and I'm going to read from verse 8. And he says this, now, But now you must rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, uh, you know what malice is? Malice is when you get to the point where you're now plotting evil against somebody because you're so angry. Then there's slander, he says, you must get rid of. That's just speaking negatively about others. And filthy language from your lips. He says, don't lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices. As a child of God, and you've put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge and image of its creator. Now that's a beautiful, beautiful picture. We have, if we have accepted Christ, we have put something off. We've put off that, uh, that sinful self that wants to live for sin, wants to live for itself. And we have put on Christ instead. We, we have sought to embrace his nature and receive his nature within us. So um, this new self that we've put on, it says in, in, in Colossians 3.10, is being renewed in our thinking, in the knowledge, in knowledge, in the image of its creator. We want knowledge that's in the image of its creator and um, of the creator. So I jump uh, verse 11, but from verse 12, it says, So chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you <laughs> and basically he's saying put on instead of that anger and rage don't make that what you wear in life don't make that your habit but put on uh, this beautiful wardrobe that God's picked for you compassion wear compassion kindness humility quiet strength and discipline be even tempered content with second place I'm reading from the message quick to forgive an offense forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you just remember what you have been forgiven of verse 14 says regardless of what else you put on wear love it's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. And then verse 15 says, Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other. I love that. In step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. None of this going off and doing your own thing. It's so easy to put your earphones in and cut yourself off from the family and just say, that's it. Uh, and there is... A time to have your own space but generally we are better together 
as a family. We need to look for ways to cultivate healthy relationship. At the ends of that verse, cultivate thankfulness. These are just keys to keeping your heart clean of offense. Uh, so go and read those verses. Um, so I hope you've got the picture. There's some stuff we've got to take off and get rid of. That anger and that malice and that offense. And there's some stuff we've got to purposely put on. Kindness, humility, love. Uh, now if you think of Paul's life, uh, um, he was suffering from the malicious acts planned against him by some of the Jews when he became a follower of Christ. Um, he could have been sitting there angry towards them. And uh, before he met Christ, he was actually just the same. <laughs> Even um, going to uh, as far as arresting and uh, uh, even witnessing and supporting the mob killing of Stephen. Don't forget that. So he was full of anger and rage at one point. But if you read through Colossians, you realize his attitude has changed completely. He's put on some stuff. He has changed. He, he carries a tremendous value for the believers and uh, care for relationships. He writes about marriages and families, even work environments, where he's thinking about relationships. He has a lot of honor and appreciation for his fellow workers. How about you? Are you wearing those things? The other day, I picked up some conflict with one of my daughters. And uh, I felt that she had been inconsiderate uh, and that I needed to address this because it was causing tension between us so eventually we set a time to talk and i had my wife sit in with us um, and i want to just say this is so important to intentionally give your relationships attention um, and allow time for any misunderstanding to surface um, and i want to encourage you that understanding should always be our goal understanding one another not just correcting that's not the goal understanding and so when i shared what i felt was was inconsiderate behavior uh, she could not see that she'd done something wrong and it resulted in 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 further breakdown of our communication at this point i i, I took it to the lord again in prayer and i said lord please help and uh, after supper there was this moment where i just felt compassion in my heart for her and i went to her grabbed the moment embraced her and I just said to her, look, I don't want to fight with you. You are so important to me and there's so much about you that I love uh, and I can't let this one thing get in the way of our good relationship. And um, immediately, uh, you know, the, the, the defense, defensiveness and the, and the tensions dissipated and we could enjoy a moment of reconciliation and, uh, and a mutual appreciation. We just stood in that place loving each other and again our partnership and our appreciation of each other was renewed so i want to encourage you that's the goal that's the purpose there's so much if, if our relationships are healthy it's a great place for us to grow in our understanding of one another and there's so much to understand about each other we barely understand ourselves um, conflicts will come misunderstandings are probably going to happen some of these uh, if left will cause deeply rooted offense, which can destroy relationships and families. Proverbs 18, 19 says, A brother offended is more unyielding than a strong city, and a quarreling is like the bars of a castle. It becomes a tough issue to deal with. But Proverbs 19, 11 says, A man's wisdom gives him patience. It is, his, it is his glory to overcome an offense. There's your challenge. It's actually, it gives honor to you and glory to you if you can learn how to overcome offenses. A great quote to end with by, by James Dobson. He is the founder of Focus on the Family Ministry. He says, he says this, what is the biggest obstacle facing the family right now? He says it is, in his opinion, it is over commitment, time pressure. There is nothing that will destroy a family uh, more insidiously than hectic schedules and busy lives where spouses are too exhausted to communicate. 
too fatigued to talk to the kids. That frantic lifestyle is just as destructive as one involving sin. He says if Satan can, can't make you sin, he'll make you busy. And that's just about the same thing. I hope you're getting the picture. That again, I'm saying the shutdown is an opportunity. If you're locked down and, and, and can't do your normal things, it's an opportunity to give attention to your relationships and to give time to your relationships. Read through Colossians chapter 3, soak in it, write down what God is saying. And we're going to include some more things in this post, some, some links to sites and some links to, uh, to lists you can work through. But uh, don't miss the opportunity take the extra time you've got I want to pray for you because there's grace from heaven to meet any challenge in your relationships let me pray father whoever's watching this right now I pray that you would give them faith and courage that that pain that offense can be overcome that there is relief for them in you they can put off anger and wrath and choose right now to put on the wardrobe you're offering them as a normal way of life. Lord, I want to speak life over these hurt and dysfunctional relationships. I want to speak a blessing over families. I want to say, Lord, thank you for the gift that family is. Will you enlarge the vision of its value in our eyes? Will you show us the opportunity that team, teaming together uh, as a family provides us? And I bless every heart that has that feels they've lost the battle. Will you give them new hope, new vision? That there are some skills to be learned. There are some things we can we can grab hold of that are going to make a wonderful difference. And by the way, Lord, thanks for the extra time we have. Help us to be intentional and not just let the enemy rule. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Bye.